Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mongoolie Show. Today we're going to talk about Kang, the reworks for Kang, how to get 5 red stars for Ultron, and this Valentine's Day bundle that's going to have you blitzing instead of spending time with loved ones. Let's check it out. Alright, so this blog is called The Quantum Celebrations, and the first thing we're going to look at is the Atrocious Attractions. Somebody needs to work on their name. We've got a special offensive, we've got Atrocious Attractions. Rough. This event starts on Monday, February 13th, and it's going to be a three-day blitzing event. Now, unfortunately, I don't know a whole lot more about it than that. We will go over a little bit, but check down in the comments. Once this event starts, I'll put the math down there. I won't make a whole new video for it, but that way you can check to see how much blitzing you're going to need to do to get this event going off. If you can make it down to milestone 15, you're going to get 42,650 points towards the Destructive Diva event, towards unlocking Titania. That is the, all the smartphones put together as well as the Dominator boots. The fun thing about this is you can also get shards for couples, which is really cool. So you're going to get Crystal and Human Torch. I, I knew about that one, but I don't know much about it. Iceman and Pyro. I had to look that one up. I didn't realize Pyro was gay. I knew Iceman was. I did not know they were a thing. And based off my Google searches, it doesn't look like the internet really knew about that one either. Colossus and Kitty Pride, they're classic. Daredevil and Electra, obviously a classic. More Kitty Pride and Colossus. Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Funnily enough, I want to say that's a newer relationship, but also I realize that I'm just getting old and that's been around forever. Daredevil and Electra, uh, Thor and Mighty Thor, she's a newer character, so that's nice. You're going to get her with the Dominator boots. Moon Dragon and Phylavel. Dazzler and Longshot. I had to look this one up too because for whatever reason I thought Longshot and Shatterstar were a couple. Turns out they're father and son so that's really weird and I don't know why I was thinking that. But uh, no, Dazzler and Longshot are apparently Shatterstar's parents so that's cool. More Moondragon and Phylavel. Icarus and Cersei. I don't know why they're being so precious with their Icarus shards. Just give them to us. He's been out for over a year at this point. Like we've got Mighty Thor way easier to get than this and she's basically brand new. Uh, and then at the bottom we've got Captain America and Captain Carter. Captain America, I'm sure, was in the very beginning of this game. Captain Carter is one of the newer characters, so it does make sense that she's at the very bottom. But, like, loosen the purse strings on Icarus already. We've got Cersei, we are able to farm her, but, like, they're really holding tight on not giving you Icarus. Now, when I said I don't know how this event is going to work, what I mean is it says earn one Valentine's Orb Fragment and you get one point. I have no idea how many you're going to get per Blitz battle. I did the math on if you do it for 10, and it's atrocious. So it's, I'm hoping it's more than that. I don't know if it'll be linked to how many Blitz points you get. So if you get 15, you'll get 15. If you get 250, you'll get 250. Or if it'll be a step, excuse me, or if it'll be a static number, like you just get 100 per Blitz with. If you get as many as 100, this event might not be terrible. It will require you blitzing on Valentine's Day and spending time with your, instead of spending time with your loved ones or, you know, crying into a pillow or whatever you do. But it should, it should be about 100 poor because anything less than that is going to be really difficult to win this. Now, I'm sure there will be special events, um, like they'll probably try and sell you bundles. They'll probably have some of these for free on the web store. So just look around. I'm sure you'll find some for free. But as far as the blitzing goes, I'll put the math down in the comments when we actually know more about it. Grand Theft Quantum uh, starts on February 16th. That's Thursday. It's a four-day event. And there's a couple of different ways you can earn on this. You can do raid battles. Now, there is a cap on that at 51,000 points, which means you can only do 17 raid battles to count. That's really easy to do over four days. That's, that's the easy part. The Alliance credits, you get 10 per. And if your Alliance is participating well, you can get 650 of these every single day. So that's 6,500 points or over the course of four days, 26,000 points. Now, between those two things, that's enough to get you Milestone 25, which is where we want to be. That's going to give you five red star for Ultron, 50 points for Ghost, six red star for Ant-Man, and six red star for Wasp. Now, Wasp, Ant-Man, and Ghost have all fallen off the meta. I don't even know if Ant-Man and Wasp were ever on the meta, but Ghost has fallen off, so that's unfortunate. But if you just want to have like your collection level be as high as humanly possible, fantastic you're gonna get a ton of shards for all of the pim tech people which you will need for the next event but the 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 red star the um the real story here is the five red stars for ultron that is huge you'll notice these are always in white and then whatever the special event is in yellow i don't know if i've ever seen one in red like they want you to know this is your goal 
you're working towards that. Now, obviously, there are 71,850 points between the Diva necklace and all your smartphones. That's fantastic. That's going to help you get your Titania unlocked or get her bigger. But this is what you're going for. So make sure you don't stop till you get to this number. And if you do your raid battles, which is easy, and your alliance credits, which if your alliance is helping you out, is easy, that's going to get you more than enough to do that. You don't have to open a single gold orb to get all these points and your red star for Ultron. That's fantastic news. I'm really happy about that. Now, if you do want to make it all the way down to the bottom, you're going to need to open 62 gold orbs as well as doing the other two things that I just told you about. Not unreasonable, except for the fact that we just had a gold orb opening event. So, like, if you're like me, I cracked all of my gold orbs to help my alliance out with that last event. I'm back up to, like, 20 for this event, because it feels like they've been being generous. And there is a payday event coming up soon, and that'll help it as well. But to ask you to do gold orb openings two events in a row is pretty rough, and it makes me nervous, like... If they do another one down the road, like, are any of these rewards worth 62 gold orbs to you? Now, obviously, you get the gold from the gold orbs as well, but, like, the stature costume? I don't even know what that is, but I'm not excited about it. The 5,000 Elite 5 credits? Sure. Like, that's good. 100% that's good. But is that worth you cracking all your orbs, knowing that they've done two gold events back-to-back? -back? Who knows if another one's coming? I'm personally not going to crack orbs for this. If I crack orbs while this is on, so be it. But I'm not I'm not working towards that bottom row. Kudos to you if you are. Next, we have a Pym Tech Quick Rumble. Um, the more stars you have, the easier this will be. And you can get 31,500 points for this. We do this every week or two weeks. This is easy. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Moving on, this is what I'm interested in. Kang isn't even, if he's in the game, you have to pay for him, but his event hasn't come out yet, and they've already done, uh, listened to the people who are playing with him, the, the content creators who have more stock than I do, uh, have the ability to play with this character already, and they've been underwhelmed, especially for a character like Kang, who should be a Thanos-level or Dormammu-level threat. The fact that he's not even a legendary kind of bothered some people, but the fact that he's not legendary and he wasn't apparently all that good it's kind of nice that they did listen to the audience and they did improve him now i don't know exactly what his stats were before so i can't really go over this and tell you like what got better and what got worse but it's awesome that they are listening to the audience and they they have changed him a little bit they even went so far as to say that um uh, one of the suggestions was that the cosmic villain should have a more plug and play feel similar to characters like doom as such, some of this kit's callouts to uh, work only with the Masters of Evil have been removed. So now he will work with everybody almost as well as the Masters of Evil. He does still have some things that works better with Masters of Evil, and that's fine. Most people do. But not with Masters of Evil, but with their home team. But it's nice to see that you can just kind of use this character wherever you want, as well as the Masters of Evil. Which is good, because Ultron's also a little bit like that. So it's really cool to see that they were listening. Uh, thank you for your feedback, and don't miss the upcoming He Who Remains event where you can earn Kang the Conqueror shards. Kang and the rest of the Master of Evil will be required for a future legendary character and the key to obtaining Quicksilver character shards fast. Doesn't say he's required for Quicksilver, but they might be required for getting him quicker. We'll see how that comes up. Don't miss his upcoming event. So, the Kang Hunt. Unleash Kang the Conqueror in battle and seize rewards for the Masters of Evil starting on Friday, February 17th with the Kang Hunt event. Earn tons of teal gear, T2 ISO 8 credits, and more to power up your roster during this special mission for Kang and his allies. I'm assuming this is going to be an event like we saw for Nakia recently, where it's a campaign and you get to play through it and you're going to burn credits to earn more. I'll put a video out next Friday, I always do, and maybe I'll go over that a little bit more in depth and show you what I'm talking about for the like, newer players, but we've done this enough times that I, th I think we know what we're doing here. Usually you want to spend about 200 um, energy purple, uh, energy shards, what the fuck are they called? Anyways, you, the cores, energy cores, you usually want to spend about 200 of those a day, some people like to spend up to 600 of those a day. Whatever floats your boat. Kang is going to be pretty decent in this game. As I said, he's going to be plug and play. And you do need him for other things going on. So I might spend more on this than I normally would. 
You're gonna get difficulty test drive. This is awesome because they're gonna give you a full Masters of Evil team. They don't say what level, but it's it's provided by them, so you don't have to build them up. And you're gonna play against Cosmic Cusable teams, and they're gonna have their Cosmic Cusable bonuses in play. So you get to see how the Masters of Evil work and see if they're worth it for you to spend the money to get them leveled up. Every time I say spend the money, I don't mean real world money. I just, I mean in-game gold, in-game currency, in-game resources. I never mean money. If you spend money on this game, that's great, but don't ever say I told you to. I mean, unless I do down the road. But I, so far, don't. that's not what I mean. So that's really cool that you're going to get to try out this Cosmic Crucible team against the Young Avengers, the Tangled Web, the Eternals, X-Men, and Wakandans, and all of that will be with the Cosmic Crucible abilities upgraded. So that's fun. You have a hard difficulty where you're going to need Kang the Conqueror, four Pym Tech, which is super easy to get, or four Masters of Evil, or some mix and match, I'm sure. The Quantum Riot difficulty is going to be much tougher. Uh, it requires Kang the Conqueror, Absorbing Man, and Titania, and two Pym Tech or Masters of Evil characters. And you need to have them in at least three stars to do Node 1. And you can see it goes all the way down to Node 7 and 8. You're going to need seven red stars, not red stars, seven stars on Kang, Absorbing Man, and Titania. Unless you're spending money, I don't imagine this is going to be possible for a good number of us. I think we're going to be capping out at Node 1, maybe Node 2. And that's a little unfortunate that there's... A lot of points down there that are just going to be for people paying for the game. I understand Scopely needs to make money. Boundless wants their money. But, it, I mean, you couldn't do half and half even. Like, I, I, I get that I'm not going to have access to everything being cheap. But the fact that I'm probably only able to do Node 1 kind of sucks. We'll see how that goes. Sting of the Wasp uh, is an event that's returning on February 17th. It's got a lot of first-time rewards. If you've already done those first-time rewards, like back when this event was out before, you will not get to do them again. If you've never done this event before, you will get some stuff for your troubles. I think it's a pretty easy event, if I remember correctly. Not a lot to talk about there. Um, they've introduced a new bug reporting feature. Now live in the game is a new feature to help us diagnose and eliminate bugs more quickly. Going forward, specific combat errors or issues will cause this in-game prompt. That's really cool. So you get a combat error. Combat error was sent. And they say, Tapping report will send team relevant information about your recent battle, but no personal data from your mobile device will be sent. It's up to you. You can just hit ignore and move on. But if you do choose to report it, it will help the community at large as Scopely is aware of the bugs. They can fix them faster. So this is just pure upside. I think that's a good quality of life fix. Gamma Raid difficulties 4 and 5. They did introduce new Gamma Raids. People have been talking about them. Apparently, the gear, uh, difficulty 5 is just an absolute monster to try and complete. My raid hasn't, my guild hasn't tried yet. Uh, difficulty 4, I believe you need to be gear tier 14. And gear tier 5, it says right here, you need to be, sorry. And difficulty 5, you need to be gear tier 16. Not a lot to talk about there. It's always nice to get harder things that you can try and work towards. Of course, there will be first-time rewards that you can get the first time you try and do it. My Alliance right now is attempting the Gamma Raid Difficulty 4. We'll see how we do. I'll let you know. Uh, strike Pass. The new Strike Pass is coming on February 15th. That's Wednesday, I believe. You're going to get some shards for Agatha Harkness, finally, and Wong, who is farmable, but I will always take more of. Wonderful news. Uh, the Elite Store. Flying into the Elite Store is the sixth red star for Archangel. I am nowhere close to that, but for those who are, good for you. Uh, character availability. What if you could earn more character shots for Captain Carter? Well, now she's going to go in the Basic Orb, Ultimus Orb, Mega Orb, replacing Shang-Chi, which is fine because he's very farmable. Premium Orb and Supply Store. All good things. Uh, we missed the Friday free claim, or at least I didn't get to talk about it in time. Uh, I guess it is still up there right now if you're watching this video right now. Go for it. Again, just always check the store. Uh, weekly events. We're going to have the Valentine's Day Blitz, which we talked about. Phoenix is coming back. You're going to need five villain mystic controller characters at minimum five to unlock Phoenix. Uh, quick rumble, quick rumble for Pym Tech, we talked about. And the Payday event is coming on Friday, which could give you some gold orbs just in time for the gold orb event.
And that's your weekly update. Thank you so much for making it to the far end of the video. If you made it this far, please give me a like and a subscribe and leave a comment below. I'd love to get more viewer interaction. I was just talking to a buddy and it turns out a lot of people who aren't plugged into YouTube don't understand how much likes, comments uh, matter. Obviously subscribes matter, everybody knows that. But the way YouTube works or the way I understand YouTube to work is the more people are interacting with you through likes, through comments, the more YouTube promotes it. So if you like this content or you like me or you just are feeling generous, if you can give me a like and a comment, it means that more people are likely to see this show up in their feed. Nothing brings a crowd quite like a crowd does. So please help me grow. Please help me get bigger. I just hit 75. I'm hoping to get to 100 in the not too distant future. I'd love to hit that triple digits and just see how far we can keep growing from there. Also, I've been doing a watch along with my buddy Adam on The Last of Us. The numbers on that have been a little bit low, so maybe that's not what people are coming to this channel for, but it is a fun video series and I'm really enjoying it and the show is phenomenal. I have not watched this week's episode yet. I'm gonna go do that as soon as I'm done editing this video. And I don't know when we're gonna get the next one up because Adam's busy all weekend with Super Bowl and other stuff. But again, those videos aren't killing the internet, so I'm not super worried about it, but I do like to make them and I'm hoping you guys are enjoying them. Other than that, I will see you next week with more for your weekly update. Good luck to you.